I'm here at Tyne, an idyllic village within a village in the heart of the Cotswolds. It consists of a boutique hotel, a restaurant, a spa, a cookery school, a farm and the gardens. My brief was to follow the ethos of Tyne, which is a love of the land and nature. All of the gardens I've designed around the buildings are aimed to be outdoor rooms. So there's effortless connectivity between the inside and the out. This is the main courtyard garden for the Ox Barn at Southrop. We finished it about a year ago. And when we arrived, there was really nothing here. There wasn't a plant in the whole yard. It was all just concrete and gravel and the odd concrete retaining wall. My brief for this space was to create the main lingering and entertaining space for the whole hotel. So when I start with a space like that, it's a big space, it's something like 30 metres times 40 metres. I decide on how I'm going to actually divide it up. And I think with any garden, however small or however big, you are nearly always going to divide it up to create different areas of interest. But at the same time, you want the space to read as a whole. You don't want it to be very bitty. And I did that by dividing it into four quarters. The first bit I started with was the main eating space outside the ox barn. That is a tall building, something like 10 metres high. And I wanted a generous paved area, 11 metres wide I made it. So it was in scale with the building and it would take in any number of guests and people milling around. The large containers either side of the ox barn doors, I've gone much bigger than usual. I've gone metre square containers of the acid mesh metal. I put in whopping big collars in it because it's a big building. You know, it's almost nine, ten metres high, the ox barn. It's fabulous and I think you need something in scale with them. And I think they work pretty well. And then the other spaces, I punctuated with the three arbours to form the corners in the four main squares. They add height and I think it's important in any design, even if it's a tiny room, if you put in a tall dresser in it, making it more three-dimensional, the space looks bigger. It's exactly the same outside. And so I did a very light metal tracery and then I reinforced it by bringing in instant hornbeam arches over the four corners and then I've used espalier pairs to form the sides and if you want to hang a cover from it you can just hang a cover underneath the dome and that forms a lovely shade to keep out the sun or to keep out the wet. Everything is still bedding in and I think they will really come into their own very shortly. The arches we've also repeated when you come into the space and we've clad them always with hornbeam. I love hornbeam, it's lovely fresh and green in the spring and then it goes a lovely sort of pale russety in the autumn and winter. Running along this section we've got some garden rooms and they've each got little private gardens so it's important that we didn't have other people too close to them. So I've sort of got a buffer zone to, to those little courtyard gardens with arches clad in hornbeam running to them so that you keep off that space and they have some hopefully peace and quiet in their little courtyard rooms. Apart from the arbours to make the 3D effect, I've also gone for the multi-stem trees, the beautiful colrutias, the cork oaks, the beautiful crotagus you can see with the wonderful red berries on them and they add these high points along with the hedges. We've got this framework but it's all quite busy within the framework. I think it's nice to have some cool chill out breathing spaces and that's why I've popped in two spaces of lawn. Now you might think why would you put in grass in a very busy high use space like this but I like it because it's so calm and restful but I've made it just a bit special. I've just raised the lawn by 100 millimetre high, a granite set's height and that means that people don't tend to cut across it in the same way but they look at it, they admire it or they might kick off their shoes and lie down and sunbathe on it. It's inviting, it's framed and it's special and I love it. And I've done the same with the cork oaks and the espalier pears. I've just raised their pits by 100 mil with a granite set. And again, makes them more special, pushes them up and says, oh, look at me. A key 
idea is to keep the ingredients to quite a simple use. So we've got the acid etched metal, which looks like lead, which I'm keen on because it's maintenance free. And in the winter, it adds a light and brightness, which you really appreciate, especially on frosty days. Even on wet days, it punches out and is bright. I've used stone paving. It's a stone farmyard, so we've used stone paving. I softened up the stone paving with gravel drifts. Gravel is always a lovely counterpoint to stone because you can plant it, you can drift things through it. Terracotta, I think terracotta, faded terracotta like this works beautifully with stone and it adds a sort of Mediterranean feel. And I do think this is reminiscent of many French farmyards that I've seen and they use a lot of stone, terracotta, and granite so those materials always work very well and naturally together. The centre point for the whole courtyard is the small circular pool so we've made this mixing old and new so we've got reclaimed rubble walling around the base of the pool and then we've done a very clean modern stone coping on the top which is beautifully generous and deep and I do love that mix of old and new and that's everywhere at time in the gardens. We've got the lovely old buildings and then we've put in a contemporary twist. The pool's fun because it's got a little chicken made by Helen Dennerly and she's an artist who makes pieces out of reclaimed metalwork and for this because it's a cooking school, it's a hotel, it's a fabulous restaurant, she's mixed spoons and forks and whisks and things to make this little chicken fountain which pours into the lovely pool. Water is a fabulous ingredient. It's mesmerizing, it bounces off light and of course it does chuck out these negative ions which give you a feeling of well-being. <music> Apart from the contrast of new materials and old materials I also like to have a lot of structure in my planting. So we've used the structure on the arches and the arbors and the hedges but then we've got very loose foil planting around it, planting in the gravel. Lots of euphorbia, lavender, things that will seed and give it that quite ephemeral look. The Bina Boreans is always a good do it, does well in lovely sunny dry situations and this is very hot, dry and sunny. Because I feel this is part of a very productive farm, I wanted to keep that sort of cultivated feel to it. So I've actually done all the ornamental planting pretty much in line. So I've got lines of box balls, lines of roses, lines of catmint, lines of lavender. It actually, I think, has worked quite well. It's much more simple to maintain than a traditional border. And it also gives a certain structure to the overall planting beds. The flowers that we've chosen are very good repeat flowering roses. I've got the lovely James L. Austin, which is that beautiful crimson magenta, and it just pumps out the flowers all summer long, and it's a good, healthy rose. And then I've got white roses like Sally Holmes and white carpet. I like the very productive feel. Everywhere at time, it's about food, farming and produce. So I love using things like the espalier pears everywhere because it's lovely to see fruit laden on branches. It really emphasises what it's all about. When you're doing any design, whatever your budget, I think the key thing is to go for gold. So you do the layout that you want initially. If you didn't have a budget at all, I would start by putting in all the plants from small sizes or cuttings and then let them get growing, put in perhaps gravel initially and then pave in the bits you want. And I think if you do it that way round, you get the design that you want down 10 years down the line or whatever, even if you wait. But if you start off just by doing little piecemeal pieces without an overall design, very rarely do you get a good satisfactory end result.